I would say to many of you, you're still living your own life, sprinkling some Jesus dust on it, trying to clean it up a little bit. But in, in its essence, it's still rotten at the core. It's still you. It's all you. And he doesn't want you. He wants him in you and you to make him Lord and you die to the stuff that you think that is so important to you. Many of you know that I do stuff. And so people say to me, what's the hardest thing you've ever done? And I say the hardest thing. You really want to know? And they go, yeah. It's to make Jesus not just the Savior of my life, but the Lord of my life. Savior is what he did vertically. Saved me. I'm going to go to heaven. Hi. Nice to see you. But Lord is who he wants to be for 60 years or so down here. And so asking Jesus to be my Lord means I surrender my ways, my will, my ego. And I say, Lord, as from Luke 22, 39 through 42, Lord, not my will, but thy will be done. I'll go to the cross, not because I'm really big on going to the cross, but somebody has to step in the gap. So I'm going to step in the gap and I'm going to go to the cross because I'm going to do what you would like versus what I like. And you have a choice in life to let Jesus be outside your life or let Jesus be your savior. Come save me from my sins and save me and get to go to heaven. Thank you very much. But you get to also say, I really though know you want to be the Lord of my life and you want to lead and direct me to do the things that you want me to do versus what I think I want to do. And that's called death to self, dying to self. And as I talked on video number two on repentance, you die to self every day, the rest of your life. And if you're not raised to think like that, you don't do that very often. You just live your life and sprinkle some Jesus on your life. And, you know, I'm a, Jesus make me better. But I still do my own thing, pray my own thoughts, think my own ways. Instead of, Lord, um, what do you want to do with me in my life? And the gifts and talents that you've given me. And how do you want to use the way you've wired me from birth for the glory of God? And so I would say to many of you, you're still living your own life, sprinkling some Jesus dust on it, trying to clean it up a little bit. But in, in its essence, it's still rotten at the core. It's still you. It's all you. And he doesn't want you. He wants him in you and you to make him Lord and you die to the stuff that you think that is so important to you. Like, I didn't want to be a pastor. I said, Lord, I got things and I got plans. And he said, that's really good. Appreciate it. I want you to pastor. I said, Lord, I'll do anything. Don't do this to me, please. I want you to pastor. I want, oh, you want to kill me? He goes, yeah, I do. Not your will, but my will for your life. I created you. I wired you. I gifted you. And I want you to do a church plan. And I want you to reach kids. And I want you to be different. I don't want you to be religious. I want you to reach kids and be normal. And I went, oh. So anyway, that's what I ended up doing. I remember I was in Reno for 25 years, Nevada. I remember driving down the hill at sunset or sunrise one morning about 17 years into being there. Church was probably about a thousand folks. Pretty successful, people said. I'm driving down early one morning to go to the gas station, wash my car, I think bring some donuts or something back for my kids. I said, Lord. And he goes, it's really not that bad here, Robert. I went, no, I guess it's not. <laughs> I guess it's not. I mean, look. If you're going to send me someplace, I guess this isn't that bad. Meaning, I didn't want to be there the whole time. You understand? I didn't want to go there. Didn't want to live in that city. Didn't want to have that ministry. And yet the Lord said, that's where I want you to go. I couldn't get away from it. I spent 25 years in a town that I didn't want to be in. But it's not my will. It's your will be done. It turned out okay, you know, but I had plans. I had bigger other plans. 
I wanted him missions. I remember when I went, I was smuggling Bibles to Eastern Europe. I'm, I'm studying Russian and German at Oral Roberts University because I'm going to do missions. Got out of special ops. I'm going to do special ops missions for Jesus. And this guy gives me this Pentecostal head massage New Year's Eve of 1978 on the Russian-Hungarian border. Shabbat da 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 You're not going to come over here and be a missionary. You're called to go home and be a missionary to America. What are you doing? He had no idea what was going on in my life. He said, you think you're coming over here to be a missionary. No, you're not. You're going to be a missionary in America. I just looked at it. I'm studying Russian and German. Go home, friend. I couldn't get away from it. Went back. Somebody invited me to come to Reno, work out, train guys, do this and that, sports, get to Reno. Hey, the football team needs a chaplain, kicking guys off the football team. Go down there. You guys need help. They said yes. 25 years. I say, Jesus, what do you want to do with my business gifts, my my speaking gifts and my other gifts. What do, what do you want to do with the way you wired me? You gave them to me so that I would glorify you with what you've given me. They're not mine. You've entrusted them to me. You're the Lord of my life. What do you want to do? Think on that. Some of you need to repent. I still do at times. Okay, see ya.